As we begin, we are shown a spacecraft belonging to the Life Foundation, trying to return to Earth with dangerous specimens. As it enters the Earth's atmosphere, chaos is heard inside the cabin, and they seem to be calling for help. The spacecraft is then forced to make an emergency landing. Upon landing, a search and rescue team follows the trail of the aircraft until they find it, lowering several tubes containing something. Meanwhile, at the Life Foundation headquarters, the leader named Carlton Drake appears anxious. He inquires about the number of organisms found. His employee reports that three have been found, and one is missing, meaning the Life Foundation has taken four space organism samples. From their screens, they see that one astronaut has survived. Then a female officer handles the astronaut and takes him in an ambulance. During the journey, the astronaut turns out to be possessed by a strange monster. Tentacles emerge from his hands, attacking the female officer and the ambulance driver, causing the ambulance to swerve. The scene shifts to San Francisco, California, where a loving couple is starting their morning. They are Anne and Eddie Brock. Anne looks beautiful in her uniform, ready to go to work, while Eddie has just woken up. Both eventually leave for work. Eddie, with his impressive motorcycle, is a television reporter who often covers social criticism, injustice in society, corruption cases, and so on. In short, Eddie is a journalist who dares to reveal the truth, even at risk. Upon arriving at the office, Eddie meets his boss, who orders him to conduct an exclusive interview with Carlton Drake, who wants to spread the message that his rocket is safe and the recent accident was an anomaly. Eddie is reluctant to interview Drake because he considers Drake a fraudster. As an investigative reporter, he cannot pretend to be nice if he finds something amiss. However, his boss insists, and Eddie reluctantly agrees. That evening, Eddie has dinner with Anne and confides in her about his assignment to interview the CEO of the Life Foundation. He admits he is doing it under duress. It turns out Anne, his girlfriend, is a lawyer working at a law firm under the Life Foundation owned by Drake. After dinner, they return home and engage in a midnight ritual. In the middle of the night, Eddie wakes up. He sees Anne's laptop on, and there he finds a private email from the Life Foundation. Curious, Eddie opens the email and finds secret files claiming unnatural deaths at the Life Foundation. The files belong to volunteers and impoverished citizens who died as experimental subjects within the Foundation. The next day, at the Life Foundation, Carlton Drake is seen speaking to school children on a field trip. Eddie then prepares for the exclusive interview with Drake. Initially, the interview goes well, but gradually Eddie starts asking sensitive questions about the deaths of the trial volunteers, which enrages Drake. In the end, Drake orders security to remove and threaten Eddie. As a journalist, Eddie is visibly disappointed, saying he can't stand lying and not revealing the truth. This issue leads to his termination. Eddie then goes to meet Anne, who is also seen leaving her office with a box, indicating she has been fired too. Anne is very angry and disappointed with Eddie and returns their engagement ring. That night, a convoy of cars heads towards the Life Foundation, carrying three capsules with alien organism species. Elsewhere, a female officer in an ambulance is seen eating live eels and causing a commotion. She then approaches an elderly woman touches her, and the old woman stands up straight and starts walking. Six months later in the Life Foundation lab, they conduct biological interaction trials with the organisms brought from space, called symbiotes. The symbiote successfully bonds with a rabbit, and Drake is pleased, stating that symbiotes can survive on Earth with the right host, and that humans might also survive in space if they bond with symbiotes. Drake then orders human trials. Elsewhere, Eddie is in a bar, lamenting his fate. While watching Drake on television, he leaves. He greets Maria, a homeless woman on the street, and gives her $20. Eddie then visits Mrs. Chen's store to buy something. While choosing items, Eddie sees a robber pointing a gun at Mrs. Chen. Eddie, feeling sorry, can only watch from a distance, unable to do anything. Back home, Eddie receives various bills and tries to find a job. He then tries to calm himself with meditation but instead he gets annoyed by the loud music. It's been a tough day for Eddie. The scene shifts back to Drake's lab, where he leads an operation to merge symbiotes with humans. The symbiote chamber opens, and it slowly approaches a volunteer trapped in the lab. The symbiote enters the volunteer's chest. At first, nothing happens, but then the volunteer experiences excruciating pain. 
his body disintegrates from within, and the symbiote emerges from the deceased volunteer's body. On another day, Eddie shops as usual and talks to a woman who turns out to be Dora, one of the Life Foundation scientists. Dora needs Eddie's help to expose the crimes committed by Drake, the head of the Life Foundation. From the beginning, Dora disagreed with Drake's decision to sacrifice the volunteers, but Eddie initially refuses to help because he knows how dangerous Drake can be. Drake can turn Eddie's life upside down in an instant, but then she leaves her business card with Eddie, just in case he changes his mind. Eddie, while observing his ex-girlfriend's residence from the street, notices that she has returned from somewhere and has a new partner, a surgeon. Eddie still hopes for a reconciliation. He continues walking alone until he stops at the edge of a bridge, contemplating the Life Foundation headquarters and what has happened to him. He then decides to help Dora and contacts her immediately. Dora invites Eddie to enter the Life Foundation headquarters to gather evidence of Drake's crimes. As they are about to enter the lab, a security guard appears, but Dora deals with him, allowing Eddie to enter the lab alone. Inside the lab, while collecting evidence, Eddie finds one of the homeless people he usually greets on the street. Trying to open the elevator door with a tool, he succeeds, but Maria jumps out and attacks Eddie. The symbiote transfers to Eddie's body, and alarms sound. Eddie is chased by several officers, and surprisingly, he easily evades them. The chase continues into the forest until they lose track of him. Back at home, Eddie is extremely thirsty and hungry, eating anything he can find, even from the trash. In the bathroom looking in the mirror, Eddie's face suddenly changes, and he hears a voice from within his body calling his name. Eddie collapses in shock. Meanwhile at the Life Foundation, Drake is furious because one of his symbiotes is missing, stolen. One of his scientists shows that a volunteer has survived with a symbiote inside their body, but Drake orders his subordinates to find the missing symbiote. Elsewhere at an airport, the elderly woman who was previously inhabited by a symbiote targets a young child. Back to Eddie the next day, he meets Anne, who is having lunch at a restaurant. Eddie's intention is to show her the evidence of Drake's crimes. Acting strangely, Eddie eats other people's food and plunges into a lobster tank. Anne and her boyfriend Louie, a doctor, then take Eddie to the hospital for examination. At the hospital, Eddie is placed in an MRI machine to check his internal organs. When Louis turns on the machine, Eddie and the symbiote inside him experience pain, and Louis turns off the machine. At the Life Foundation, Drake's subordinates have captured Dora and discovered her involvement in the recent break-in. Drake interrogates and pressures Dora to reveal who else is involved in the breach, and she says the name Eddie Brock Drake suddenly opens a container holding a symbiote, which immediately enters her body. The scene shifts to Eddie's house, where he suddenly hears a voice inside him urging caution. As Eddie opens the door, Drake's men burst in, demanding the return of their symbiote. Unexpectedly, Eddie easily incapacitates them with the symbiote's power within him. Even Eddie can act like a superhero, impressing Drake who watches the footage with admiration for what the symbiote does inside Eddie's body. Eddie then escapes on his motorcycle, leading to a chase on the streets. With the symbiote's power, Eddie avoids all attacks from the Life Foundation's men. Briefly distracted, Eddie is hit by one of the Life Foundation's vehicles, appearing injured with a broken leg. But then all his wounds and broken bones heal instantly without a scratch due to the symbiote within him. The true form of the symbiote bites off the head of one of Drake's men, then escapes and avoids police pursuit by diving into the sea. Eddie, who has escaped from the Life Foundation's pursuit, converses with the symbiote inside him named Venom. Venom reveals that the symbiotes will seek their own hosts, and Venom has chosen Eddie to be his partner. Venom expresses a desire to summon his kind using Drake's rocket, which is about to be launched, and then they will conquer Earth. Meanwhile, the child previously inhabited by a symbiote has arrived at San Francisco airport. In the Life Foundation lab, Dora and the symbiote that emerged from her body are both found dead, frustrating Drake because one of his symbiotes has died. Elsewhere, Eddie tries to enter the news office where he used to work, but Richard, the receptionist, cannot let him in for security reasons. However, when he leaves the building, Venom offers to help Eddie by climbing the building to the top. At the top, a plane passes by them, causing Venom pain due to the noise, 
and Eddie falls, but Venom manages to prevent him from falling to the ground. Venom then enters a room, Eddie's boss's office, where Eddie leaves evidence of Drake's crimes. Eddie wants his boss to publish the evidence. As he exits the building, many police officers confront Eddie. Eddie warns them, and then Venom emerges from within him, easily wreaking havoc on the officers. When Venom tries to eat one of the police officers, Anne witnesses it, but Eddie tries to explain. Anne then takes Eddie to the hospital. Venom admits to liking Anne and agrees to go to the hospital. Inside the car, Venom reveals to Eddie that his weaknesses are loud sound waves and fire. Back at the Life Foundation lab, Drake sees a young child wandering around. After questioning the child, the symbiote transfers from the child's body into Drake's. At the hospital, Lewis tells Eddie that his internal organs are deteriorating, but Venom inside Eddie says he can heal him. An angry Venom then chokes Lewis, and Anne, witnessing this, immediately turns on the MRI machine, causing Venom pain and forcing him out of Eddie's body. Eddie is pulled out of the room, and finally he is free from Venom. Eddie then leaves the room while Anne and Louie argue about what happened. Venom is seen sneaking out through an air vent. Anne realizes that Venom has left. Elsewhere, Venom enters the body of a dog. When Eddie tries to leave the hospital, he is easily captured by military forces, weakened without Venom. Inside the Life Foundation, Drake interrogates Eddie, demanding to know where his symbiote is. But Eddie refuses to answer. Losing patience, Drake, with the symbiote riot inside him, orders his men to kill Eddie. They take Eddie into the forest, while Riot commands Drake to launch his rocket to bring millions of his kind to conquer Earth. In the forest, as Eddie is about to be killed by Drake's forces, he is saved by an unexpected figure, Venom, who has entered Anne's body. They kiss, and Venom transfers from Anne back into Eddie. Venom instructs Eddie to stop Riot, who, as a leader, will summon his symbiote army from space to Earth. At the Life Foundation, Drake orders his men to launch the rocket. Meanwhile, Eddie and Venom, now back in Eddie's body, head to the Life Foundation to stop Riot. Eddie is surprised because Venom initially wanted to conquer Earth, but changed his mind after meeting Eddie. Venom confesses that among his kind, he is considered a loser and does not want other symbiotes to dominate Earth. Venom wants to be the only symbiote on Earth. Inside the Life Foundation, Drake forces his subordinates to launch the rocket. Realizing one of his men is trying to sabotage the launch, Riot inside Drake kills him. Everyone is terrified and flees, but the rocket launch has already begun. Outside the building, Venom realizes he is not as strong as Riot, but still tries to stop him. As they approach the rocket, Riot confronts Venom, and a fierce battle ensues. Venom struggles against Riot, who can produce various weapons from his body. In the fight, Riot, being too strong, enters Eddie's body and takes control over Venom. They merge under Riot's control, becoming more powerful. As Riot is about to enter the spacecraft, a painful buzzing sound hurts Riot, and Venom is freed from his grasp. It turns out Anne made the sound from the control room. Eddie and Drake are freed from their symbiotes, and they fight. Eddie kicks Drake, causing him to fall, but Riot, merged with Drake, stabs Eddie from behind, leaving him mortally wounded. Riot then rushes to board the launching spacecraft. As Eddie lies dying, Venom emerges from an air vent and enters Eddie's body. Eddie rises with Venom and chases Riot. They tear the rocket's fuel tank, causing an explosion that kills Drake and Riot inside. Venom, unable to withstand the fire, says goodbye to Eddie. Eddie then falls into the sea, returning to his normal form without Venom. The following day, Eddie is seen talking with Anne about their respective jobs, and then Venom's voice is heard from within Eddie revealing that Venom has not died. On the way, Eddie talks to Venom, instructing him not to randomly eat people. Venom is forbidden from consuming good and righteous individuals. Then Eddie enters a store and buys some food for himself and Venom. There, they encounter a man who regularly robs Mrs. Chen, pointing a weapon at her. Without much delay, Eddie approaches the man, and Venom promptly devours him, leaving nothing behind. In the final scene, Eddie enters San Quentin prison to interview someone. The guards call the person Red, and as Eddie approaches, the man says that there will be a slaughter or carnage once he is free, because there is still one symbiote left out of the four symbiotes that came to Earth, and the movie ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe.
because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video. Two.